How are you today? I'm so excited to do a presentation for you today about the strange phenomena that showed up on the Schumann Resonance chart this past weekend on June 18th, 19th, and 20th. Was this real? I've been doing a bunch of research and I have some interesting points of discussion for you. So we're going to look at science and data and it's so interesting. I have several sources that I'm going to show you. Each one is presenting information on their area and what I'm doing is linking these ideas together, asking if this could have been an influence potentially on these patterns on the Schumann resonance chart. And so I'm excited to show that to you. So the conclusions related to the Schumann that I'm going to make or the the questions I'm going to ask are, are mine. So what we're going to talk about is magnetism, heat, and the Schumann resonance phenomenon. And I'm talking about that interesting weave that was present. It was almost like a weave pattern throughout the hertz on the Schumann chart that corresponded with human beta brain waves through up through our gamma brain waves. So around the mid teens um, up through 40 hertz on the space observing system chart. So this is my tweet from the day that it happened and I did a live stream that day and what I called this was cymatic patterns. And I talked about this at the end of my live stream. So for more information about the human consciousness aspect and the aspect of cymatics, I recommend my live stream video from the day of the chart and then the second one that I did on Tuesday. Okay, this is Ethical Skeptic on Twitter. And this was very interesting. He wrote an article where he mentioned the Schumann resonance. And so when this pattern came out, he said Foleagues, that's what he calls his his followers, T-E-S, Foleagues, knew and know. And let's see what he's talking about here. So this is from his article. I'm going to show you that in a second. But what he's saying, this is direct from his article, and his website is theethicalskeptic.com. In Observation 5 in the article, what he says is, it is a well-established fact that the global Schumann Resonance Range banding power peak serves as a very precise indicator of global temperatures. And then there is a link between the annual variation of the Schumann resonance intensity and the global temperature. So this is very fascinating. This is also on his, tw his Twitter. This right here is Friday, June 16th. And what you can see is that there was an anomaly, a spiking in temperature in the oceans here. Okay, but look where else it was. See here, see here, and here. This is where Tomsk is. It's right about there. That's where the Space Observing System Institute is. A spike in Schumann resonance intensity and global temperature are related. That's a scientific, you know, that's been analyzed. So this is really interesting because this is a tweet from June 19th. There was a temperature spike described as extreme. It's, he says here, marine heat waves are categorized from one to five. There are hot spots hitting category five. This is highly unusual, and this was published on June 19th, okay? So what, what's happening is that there was an unusual temperature spike. Here's a reference to his article about this, and then you can see Zero Hedge had an article, The Atlantic is on Fire, that was referencing these temperature spikes. Well, let me show you something really interesting. The temperatures, this is from the ethicalskeptic.com's article. In observation eight, what you can see, there's a movement of the heat. Look how the heat moves when there's a spike in the Atlantic here. Well, where is the Institute? It's right up here. And so I'm just going to show you something. Here's Italy right here. So we're going to also, here, let me just show it to you right now. So here's the Italian charts. What you can see is there was a severe spike. This is from Schumann Resonance Live Updates at Live Schumann on Twitter. And what you can see is that this is from June 23rd. It's not clear exactly which day this is, but the fact is, is that there has been spiking on the Italian charts. So it's possible the spiking on the Italian charts might also relate with this temperature movement across the globe. 
Isn't that interesting? I explained on my live about potentials for variations in charting. So I'm not going to go into that right now because I want to stay focused on this idea from the ethical skeptic and from the data and scientific results. Like this is something that's being noticed. Now here, check this out. There's something else I think going on as well. That's a possibility. So here's the estimated pole shift. And there's a lot being written now and talked about. Ben Davidson, from Suspicious Observers is an expert on this topic. He has many interesting videos about it. But there's a geomagnetic north pole shift going on. And you can see that the direction is basically from up here in Canada. And then it goes to the left on this chart to the, to the west of the north pole here. So let's look, take a look at the map. And we see that movement is coming in this direction. And where is Tomsk? It is literally right in line with that. If that pole shift estimate continues in this straight line. Okay. So that's really fascinating. I did a little bit of research on magnetism and ethical skeptic is referring to um, iron heating up in the Earth's core, which is really interesting. Well, when I researched about Earth's magnetism, this commenter on Quora said that Earth's magnetism arises from electrical current generated by the movement of hot liquid iron at its core. The current creates a magnetic field with invisible lines of force flowing between the poles. The geomagnetic pole marks the ends of the axis of Earth's magnetic field. Okay, so this is really interesting now. So now we not only have brought in the idea of heat, but we've brought in the idea of that there might be related magnetism. If there's iron moving in the planet, that's contributing to this. And that's an Ethical Skeptics article. Well, here's a really interesting diagram. And what you can see here, this is the world magnetic model, and this is the North Pole. Well, look where the magnetism is strongest. I don't know what you would call this, what the term, but there's something building up here. And we know that the pole is essentially going in this direction from left to right on the map. Okay. So we know that the North Pole direction movement is this way. This is the estimated movement. So what is right over here? The Institute, right? Somewhere in this direction, right? So here's my idea. If there's heat that's being generated, if there is an effect of iron with the movement of the geomagnetic pole, if iron generates contributes to mag Earth's magnetism, if the North Pole is moving, and if all of this just happens to all be going in the direction towards Russia and it, and and with the North Pole geomagnetic North Pole towards Tomsk, well, what if there was an anomaly of magnetism between the of heat and magnetism that just kind of like in a moment erupted somehow? Would that have caused, you know, this pattern on the chart? Could that be possible that what we're actually seeing here is either the effects of magnetism or of, of the mag of magnetic results of heat results spiking the numbers just in, in, in incredible ways, which I discussed in my live. And because this is in the range of human brain waves, is it the human consciousness, right? Are we giving ourselves an image of what might be happening. I don't know, you know, because when, when we look at, here's a Wikipedia article on electromagnetism, and you, you see that electromagnetic interactions are responsible for the glowing filaments. So you see that there's a line of energy, kind of like, you know, lightning, right? So there's a line of energy and, you know, we see these lines of energy going through the chart. And it's interesting because there's a geometry, right, to the flow of magnetism. That's what these narrow lines are here. And there's flowing lines of energy in the chart. And I guess what I'm wondering is if there's an interplay be between actual events affecting the electromagnetic environment and the heat environment and the magnetic pole, right? And there's actual events happening. Did they either affect the data on the Schumann chart or affect human consciousness, which then put a picture of something unusual up on the Schumann chart? 
Isn't that interesting? Because those images on the chart were unusual. And one really thinks, how could that have been generated, right? So Jordan Sather put out a tweet today, this morning, and he said that he had emailed with the Space Observing System Institute and got an email back. So I really, I respect Jordan Sather's work. And so this is not a criticism of Jordan at all when I'm, when I'm going to just put out some ideas about this. I respect his work. I think he does a really interesting work and a great job. He said he emailed the group that runs the monitor and he got a reply. And they said strange resonances observed in the previous day were caused by an accident, the supply substation, and are not correct. So here's his copy of the email. Hello, the strange observances recorded, observed in the previous day were caused by an accident at the supply substation and are not correct. The issues have now been resolved. We apologize for the possible misleading space observing team. Okay, so here's the thing. I've emailed them three times, okay, in the past (laughs) few weeks, several weeks, and I've gotten zero responses. So maybe because this was an unusual event, they responded to Jordan. I don't know. But um, he's he's lucky he got a response from them, I guess, is what I have to say. And and that's that's great. But an accident at the supply substation. What was the accident that would have caused this? And how would that have happened? Like how would an accident at the supply substation and are not correct? So I guess... I guess it's just interesting to me because the actual website went offline twice during this event and the data was halted at least once that I saw. But because I've seen other people's pictures of the chart, it looks like the data was halted one, two or three times. So in all of those times, those five experiences with the data, it was not removed until there was literally a worldwide response to what's going on. And it trended on, Schumann Resonance trended on Twitter for two full days. And a whole lot of people brought worldwide focus to this, and at least in the Western world. I mean, you know, this was very impactful. So why didn't they, in one of the, you know, two times the website was offline or one, two or three times that the data stopped, did they not take the pattern off if it was somehow not correct? And what was not correct about it? Was it not correct that they published it in the first place? Was it an accident that it got published in the first place? You know what I'm saying? (laughs) I don't know. Inquiring minds want to know. (laughs) Inquiring minds want to know the details right? Maybe we were shown the information and then it was taken away. This is a personal story I'm going to share with you. Before the earthquake in Turkey, an extreme earth event. I mean, if you looked at any of the images that occurred during and then after the earthquake, you saw there was a very, very big tear in the land there, you know, and God bless all those people. But here's the thing. Here's what happened that I noticed, okay? At least three nights, it might've been four, but it was at least three nights before the Turkey earthquake. I was out taking a walk one night and I happened to pass a public pool and something raised up my hairs on my, (laughs) you know, raised up the hairs in the back of my head. There was something off and I didn't know what it was. So I looked around and I looked at the pool and the pool was lit with multicolored lights and I noticed something shocking and unusual. Now I'm on the West Coast and um, I noticed that the water was moving in the pool. And I looked around to see if there was any evidence that anyone had just recently been in the pool. And from the look of it, it was probably a few hours at least since someone had been in the pool. And therefore any waves related to a person being in the pool shouldn't really be present anymore. But then I noticed something else. The water wasn't just moving. It was sloshing back and forth. It was sloshing. Now I was standing on the ground and the ground did not appear to be shaking. Okay. I wasn't feeling any shakes or tremors. Violet flame over that. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just setting intentions, praying when I say that, you know, that um, for the transmutation of any energy in the highest good. But I was in shock and I thought, wow, that's not good to see the water sloshing, like 
flowing up against the side of the pool and causing like, you know, a spray enough to be noticeable. And so I said a prayer at the side of the pool. I said a prayer because I thought this doesn't look good. Well, you know, four days later, three nights later, four days later, when I woke up, there was a terrible earthquake in uh, Turkey. And that was, that was bizarre because it's all the way around the world from here. But that was the only major, major thing that happened in that time period. And so, you know, when I look at this chart that was very unusual and then suddenly, you know, just goes back to normal, I wonder if it's like the pool water sloshing. And if so, I wonder, what does it mean? Now, I think it's an interesting question. And I think that the scientific data, whether it's about magnetism, whether it's about heat, whether it's about the Schumann resonance, unusual, unusual spiking, I think it's just these are interesting data points to consider and muse on. And I think it'd be cool if we could really have a discussion about these things, you know, with uh, as thinking people without an agenda of it has to mean a certain thing. (laughs) You know, (laughs) I mean, you know, my thoughts on the Schumann resonance. I primarily feel that it's a, a reflection of human consciousness at the same time. You know, it's clearly tied in with the planet as well. And in fact, the core, you know, the natural frequency of the planet is one of the major bands on the Schumann resonance and is known to help sustain and benefit human life. So I have a um, optimistic view of these things. And I think that I have an optimistic view because I believe in God and I believe that we are loved by the creator and that the highest good unfolds. And so I look at the data and the information that we've just talked about, and in my heart I trust that all is well, and that whatever I'm meant to do in my life related to this information, I'll be guided on, and that um, I will follow my guidance to the best of my ability. And I think that, you know, humanity has been through a lot, and, you know, the good guys get to win too. (laughs) Just remember that, you know? Humanity does get to have its positive outcome. In my heart, that's what I believe. I believe that that's something that the creator will assist us in unfolding. 